Hello friends, we are in point 14 Trinidad. Trinidad is a island that makes a part of Trinidad and Tobago. That's it on the map. That's the area we are in Trinidad. It's the southern part of the country. This is in the Caribbean by the way. The actual island is very near to Venezuela. We just passed the constituency office on the right. I believe this is a restaurant of some sort. I haven't been in. This video is recorded in 5.3K, which means if you put it on a big screen, it will look very sharp and detailed. I am using an extended recording plural to give you a view that you wouldn't otherwise see normally. I'm going to walk about the whole of Point 14 proper and I say proper because there are many streets to Point 14 but I can't obviously cover them all. Now in case you're wondering why you're seeing so much police and the roads blocked and stuff is because today is the Point 14 borough celebrations. That happened earlier in 2023 and the irony in it is that I actually came to South for another purpose which I have other videos for that I have not released yet and uh, came this way because I heard and saw some of the celebrations took place and I was taking place and I said you know what let's get out and record it so in this video you will see a lot of um, carnival like celebrations but this is not the official carnival of Trinidad and Tobago uh, but you will see a lot of people in costumes, dancing, music, and so forth. However, do note that I will not be playing the recorded music by music professionals and so forth because those lead to copyright issues that I rather not deal with. If I left it in the video, then this video will almost become part of the music artist's um, revenue and that would really be unfair to me because i'm the one doing all this legwork and recording and editing and publishing and so forth and just because it picks up their song suddenly it becomes becomes theirs so to avoid that i will mute it in certain areas and when i do that you will know it's because it's um, the background music now because it's the borough celebrations you'll see that a lot of things are closed but they, they do have these tents out in the square there and elsewhere for people to sell stuff food gifts crafts and so forth I will try to stop and talk with some of them um, I won't I won't do those talking bits too much in this video maybe one or two Others I will put in other videos because the conversation goes on for quite a bit. Now, in this video I will also tell you a little bit about how to watch a YouTube video and especially how to watch a JB's Man Cave video because some people new to the channel just don't seem to know how to do it. Those of you who know already, thank you, keep watching. You can ignore me if you like or keep on listening. But before I do that, let me tell you about Point Fortin. Point Fortin started mainly as an agricultural based community. There weren't a lot of people here until the discovery of oil. And because of the discovery of oil in Trinidad, you have places like Atlantic LNG, which you will see later in this video. And um, that led to a sort of a boom where infrastructure needed to be developed and so forth in order to attract workers. Uh, but that, although that has led to the development of the town, there's still a lot more to do. This guy is asking me to come and feature his card, so let's listen in. Go ahead, talk about your stuff. You're going to Hello, accuse my love, Slocon. Originated from San Fernando, down here in Point Borode. What's the flavors you have there? It have pineapple, sorrel, lime, grape, guava, blueberry, lemon, raspberry, banana, 
coconut, vanilla, peach, banana, the choice is yours. When I, in my day, it only had um, <laughs> two flavors, two like flavors. pine and a red one, I know, tutti frutti or something. But the original right? flavors I have right now is guava and sorrel, 100% oh, okay. fruit. Cool. Alright, thank nice, you. Nice, nice. Where can I find that? JB's Man Cave. JB's? Man Cave. J? P. You know, apostrophe S. At this time when I um, did this video, I didn't have cards to give out, so I do because a lot of people ask me about JB's Man Cave and where to find it and what where is it and what it's about and stuff. So I have cards and a QR code which people can use to um, get by. I always get excited when people are willing to be on camera and they understand the value of having somebody on YouTube actually feature them. You'd be surprised, but I would say the majority of people that I meet actually do not want to be on, on camera, even though they are selling something and may become more popular. They rather not be um, published to the world. And I don't know why is that. Probably some trainees are just shy or more conservative, but um, some aren't. And that guy wasn't. And because of that, he got some exposure there. You can always check him out if you're in point 14. He had quite a lot of flavors, like I was telling him. In the days when I was growing up, uh, buying snow cones, and he had um, two flavors, three for the most. And uh, that's all you had. But as you can see, there's quite a selection now. So going back to point 14, yes, it's now an oil-based community. And in order to attract workers, they have developed the place to what you see now. A lot more infrastructure, a lot more buildings, a lot more commerce and stuff. Whenever oil is not in big con uh, production, there are retrenchments and that can lead to a lot of problems in the community. But um, more or less, a lot of people here do work on the, with the refinery, among other things. Uh, point 14 is also like the last stop on the way to, if you're going to like Cedrus or Ikakos, and when I say last stop, I mean the last large developed place. I mean, you do have Faizabad and Saparia and stuff, but those places, in my opinion, are not as big, nor do they offer as much as a place like Point Fourteen. And when I say offer as much, I mean in the way of getting commodities and services and so forth. There, Saparia, Faizabad, um... All those places, Cedrus, they, you know, the places are a lot smaller. And that's merely it. So, let me tell you a bit about how you watch JB's Man Cave. First of all, and if you're new to the channel, the first thing you will see is that I record everything in the raw. Uh, I don't do like other people where I cut and paste just show you the highlights and then make a short video. No, my videos tend to be pretty long and tend to cover things as they are. So whereas somebody would have stopped probably by that roundabout, turned around and focused on the noise and the music and the costumes, I keep walking and pick up probably the things that others may feel is not interesting. But if you were from point 14 or grew up here or passed through here or have some sort of connection, you would want to see this because you would want to see what point 14 looks like now. In addition to which, I don't like buttering up or creating an illusion with my videos. I like to show things as they are. So I don't focus on just the niceties or what the tourists might want to see. I show you what really makes point 14 what it is today. So I'll keep walking, picking up areas that may not seem so inviting, but still make up point 14. I know not everybody likes that, but that is what JB's Man Cave is about. And that's why my channel keeps growing, because I show the things people want to see. This takes a lot more effort, of course, and that's why not everybody does it. It takes a lot to record and to edit a video that is, you know, an hour and a half or more long. So we're continuing along these streets here. And as we go into a different street, you can always look to the top right. 
Usually I will tell you what the street name is. Not by voice, but by text. You will see the name of the street or the road there. Um, I always get, I'm always um, I'm amazed by people who come and comment and say, well, you didn't tell us what the street name is when the street name clearly appears in the video. Those kind of people, I just hide them in my channel. I don't permit them to con continue commenting because, you know, while ignorance is bliss, I, people online just like to troll and I really don't have time for that. I'm only interested in people who are genuinely interested in the content that I share and also want to contribute to the content by sharing meaningful experiences um, rather than just looking for things to, f to find fault about or to criticize when it's not even relevant. So for instance, if you are connected to um, point 14 or you saw me pass a building I want to give some historical background to it or whatever please do comment I like those kind of comments I don't claim to be a historian or an expert on point 14 or anything like that so I also count on the older folks and those who live here and used to live here to also share their experiences of point, point 14 and help us all learn more about this part of Trinidad. Just comment. But when you do comment, um, and this is another thing that people get confused about, I would always ask that you put the timestamp. Now, what is the timestamp? The timestamp is YouTube's way of saying, you know what, this is the part of the video that you're interested in. It's not the counter, which is the top right countdown that you see on your screen. That counter is just a service to you to help you know where you are in the video and how long is left, etc. in case you want to come back. The timestamp is by the comment bar. Usually there's a plus sign or something that will tell you, click on that and you could get an automatic timestamp of the video as you're watching it. And the reason why I would like for you to use that is because some people will say that building is X or Y. But you know, what is that building? Unless you put a timestamp, we're not going to know. So you need to put a timestamp in order for people to know where you are talking about in the video. As you can see, as I go through these streets, it transitions a bit, right? It starts to get a little green. We pass some residential areas and here's an unusual forest that is quiet. I wish we had a lot more of these in Trinidad. And when I say these, I mean areas within the city that just have trees, forests, parks and stuff. We do have them, huh? but to me we need more as a Caribbean island. Just too much concrete around. And of course, as you can see, this part of the forest, while it's nice, isn't as well kept. You know, there's garbage strewn about, the road is in disarray. It's the sidewalk pavement looks like it could do it some repair. Nevertheless, I still like it. It's peaceful here. Up ahead is Atlantic LNG. Oil and gas production. I don't know how I would feel about living or being this close to a plant like that. I guess any pros and cons, this would be one of the cons for the area, except for the fact that it also provides employment. So going back, so I, when you're talking about something, make sure and put a timestamp. Um, for instance, right now is... 14 minutes, 8 seconds, 9 seconds, etc. And you would use that timestamp to say, okay, I'm talking about the forest. So all I'm saying really is that when you comment, just, you know, be detailed about what part of the video you're talking about. Put a timeline so that we can know. Because often people comment and really I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what they're referring to and so forth. Now the other part of how to watch a JB's Man K video. Yes, the video is long, but I really advise you to not be jumping around. Um, some people will comment, and sorry to say, but it can be quite 
irritating when they say you should have done this you should have turned to the street you should have mentioned this when in fact i have done all those things in the video if you watch the video so in other words if you're going to be skipping around the video you know an hour on something or almost two hours is a long time but if you're just jumping through the video you will obviously assume in your mind something isn't covered something isn't said something isn't shown but that's not the way to watch one of my videos. Really, the ideal way is to take some peaceful time uh, when you you know you have your attention. Put this video on a big screen. Uh, you can do that if you have a smart TV or you have a computer that's hooked up to your TV or some device. And what you can do is play it big so you could see all the details and hear what I'm saying. Put the volume up sufficiently that you can listen to what I'm saying because uh, some people, I don't know, I guess they just don't hear, they just don't understand or they just don't listen. Maybe my voice is a bit too boring for them, which is understandable. But uh, if you really want to know what's going on on my channel and what this video is about, you would need to hear it. It's the best way to pick up everything too, because my videos are usually made um, in the highest resolution possible. And at an angle where, you know, you wouldn't have otherwise seen elsewhere. Now, you know, for instance, a normal camera, um, if somebody was walking with it, you would be at the height of a human, which is much closer to the road than this is. Right now the pole is extending up to 15 to 20 feet in the air. So that's why it allows me to pick up a lot more. You could have a drone, but a drone will only pick up everything from above, not like this. So I try to bring the best of both worlds, walking at, like if you were a giant on the street, that gives you a great perspective that you wouldn't have otherwise seen. As you can see, there's a lot of commerce and industry, the buildings, the kind of buildings in point 14. Some of these streets have been turned into one way or two way based on the borough celebrations. But usually when you're passing through point 14, let's say like you're going to Cedrus, a lot of these streets are one way. And it's hard to commute around um, Point Fortin without having to do a lot of driving, going through one one way street to the next, and so forth. Now the next thing I will do on this video is because a lot of people, um, especially new ones to my channel, really don't know about me and do not understand why I create this video um, or these videos or my whole channel on the whole. I guess they get used to watching a lot of other YouTubers who have a lot of other reasons for creating this, but uh, mine is kind of unique. First of all, I was born in Trinidad, but I am a traveler. So I've been to many countries, lived in many countries, and could be anywhere at any moment. In addition to which, I do use content from other um, videographers and so forth in other countries who assist me in creating what JB's Man Cave is today. So, but the content that you do see, about 95% or more of it is my own production, my own video recording. And the other 5% I may use from elsewhere. However, 100% of it is edited and published by me. What does that mean? It means that no matter where I got the video from, whether I recorded it or somebody recorded it for me, uh, in the end, when I process and publish it, I am doing that all by myself. So all these videos are copyrighted. I have all the rights reserved for it. They shouldn't be published anywhere else. In fact, if you find my videos being published 
elsewhere, please tell me because I will go after those people like a dog on a bone because that's I just do not like. I don't like plagiarism and I don't like people taking advantage of my content, especially for the reason why I do it. Why do I create these videos? I create them because I have children with special needs and in order for them to receive all the goodness that's due to them, I create these videos to provide a way that they can um, benefit. Lots of medical attention needs to be happening with my um, special needs boys. They need lots of intervention. And sometimes it's way beyond my, why my wife and I. And uh, these videos help to supplement, I would say, the ability to take care of them and their needs. So knowing that and knowing the reason why I create these videos, please let me know if you see people plagiarizing my content. These videos should only be on YouTube. I do have a TikTok channel where, um, and I only do it just basically to, to maintain my name there, where I show some shorts. But other than that, I only show my videos on YouTube. That's where they need to be and where they need to stay. As we come up here, you'll see a lot of carnival costumes. On the left is somebody dressed up as a chieftain. Uh, that's the American Indian culture. I don't know how the Native Americans feel about people dressing up like them. That's something I would have to investigate. But anyway, that's a common costume, that and demons, which you saw across there. Uh, for carnival, they like to dress up as that. And there's a drone in the sky. Don't know who's handling that drone, but it's there. Carnival celebrations is a big deal here. Usually it happens near March or April, sometime in February. It depends on the Easter calendar. Usually based on that is when carnival happens. A lot of people think that it should be a specific day so that the day can be planned for rather than just based on a religious holiday. But the history of um, carnival is really actually based a lot on religion and freedom, emancipation, different things. So it has that context and I guess some people want to keep it. Now, those people on walking sticks, that's a very common thing here. And when I say common, common whenever you see celebrations like this. Um, they start to learn from when they are children and grow up into adults doing this. And some of them can be quite tall, almost touching those electricity lines. So I hope some of them are careful because, I mean, even though they may pass underneath it, if they stretch their arms or something, they could pra practically touch that pole or those lines. Now this one guy here, he's coming close to the camera and I think he wants to um, fix his um, walking sticks. So I asked him if he would allow me to show how it's made up. And he said to go ahead, which I appreciated. So you can see how the stick is on his leg and how it's wrapped. They use wood and that looks like bandage from what they would use, <coughs> excuse me, from for like first aid, as well as some wraps, velcros, padding, wood, some bolts. Very interesting. Do you think you could do something like this? Walk around.
at that height I don't think I would be able to do that at, at least not that tall but as you can see because my camera is high I can I m the lenses are just as tall as them so you can get the idea of what they see when they are up there in the background the music is um, Tassa so I will allow you to hear a bit of that and just watch and then I will come in every now and again to give some commentary Tassa drums are in the background as we get closer you'll hear more of it. Now that I've brought down the camera, you can see what it looks like. Mocha jumbies from the level of street, normal height. So you can see how tall they are. It's it can be quite hot, even though it's a cloudy day because this is the Caribbean there's a lot of humidity usually humidity here is at 90 percent and um, I can't even imagine what it would be like to wear all that cloth like this guy in the white that's a lot of stuff to carry and to wear it could be quite hot in there If you're hearing some snapping, that's because of whips. Some of the costume bearers have them, the ones that play the demons.
so I'll come and start talking here because now music is going to happen as I explained earlier in my production um, the pre-recorded music that tends to be a problem um, with copyright issues so to avoid that I have to take that out yeah you can complain you could say oh you should have training music but that's not how life is online sometimes you have to to act and react based on the situation and copyright issues is not something I want to deal with so you could see so many people dancing being merry it gives you an idea of what traditional carnival is, is is like in Trinidad when I say traditional I mean the typical carnival that happens once a year that truck on the left they usually supply music DJs would sit there and they are big speakers and they would um, blast a lot of the typical calypso soca music that is common during carnival But for me, it's, it's a bit too intense. The noise level is too high. To me, it's a bit exaggerated. I can't even understand how people could enjoy it when they're that close and it's that loud. There are people who actually stand up next to the speaker and dance there. And to me, that's like, wow, they've lost all hearing. These are the bigger costumes. Usually one person or two people may handle one of these large costumes they um, roll on wheels that's how they carry the weight but it can still be quite heavier and so sometimes when the person is tired they need to take a break or somebody will help them push it sometimes you will see guides on the street those who are not in costume they try to get all the revelers and people into some sort of order for the because um apart from the actual costumes that they wear and stuff in many cases there's supposed to be a presentation which means they have to line up or dance in a certain way or move in a certain way and with all the chaos on the streets, all the noise and stuff, it could be hard to get people to follow through. You can see how many speakers there are on the right and on the left, and all of them are blasting at some point. By the way, the road that we came down on, that's the Point Fortin main road, so that's where I, everybody is more or less gravitating there. There's a small band on the bottom of the screen that we just saw, but I would love to pick them up, but there's just so much noise around that... Um, it would be drowned out by the DJ systems. Some people don't care for that part of the celebrations either, so they would come to these outskirts and just talk with their friends, look for something to eat and so forth. In Trinidad slang, they say liming. North America and elsewhere, they may say hanging out or hanging around or something like that but here they call it liming you know just sitting on the corner or whatever and talking with your friends drinking eating something etc you see that part on the cross there that we're going close to where they make crafts and stuff i have a video that i'm going to put out about that i wanted to do it now but as I started to talk with the guy, I realized, wow, I just can't hear him. But at least you get to see a bit of it. And I, I have a specific video featuring him that I will show.
and you see him talking there but um really i had to mute it because um the the, the music in the background is being picked up too much he's a good guy and i will show him in a specific video later right now what he's doing is showing something called shark shark which is taking a fruit the the, the hard part of a seed i should call it and making an instrument out of it so i told him i will come back to him that's the that's the thing i don't like too about when music is very loud and i mean i'm not talking about just as a celebration where you would expect it to be loud but i mean during other days, normal days, somebody would be blasting their music and I'm trying to interview somebody or talk to somebody and I just can't because the music is all over. So these are some of the outskirt parts of point 14. Again, as I've said before, you know, on my channel i like to show the raw of everything everything about point photo not just focusing on the costumes and the dance and stuff but the other parts that make up point photo maybe you are accustomed to it. those buses on the left those are maxi taxis they transport people that is what a truck looks like when it's carrying a steel pan ban pulls that trailer which is pretty long and it has all um, people on there playing the steel pan. It moves at a very slow pace because the people are playing. So there's no jerking and whatnot. So it takes a lot of work from some of the um, truck engines and truck drivers to be doing that all day. It's a whole skill level of its own. Um, so this may seem off the beaten path, which it is. This is just a section of Point Fortin where people come to park their vehicle and stuff. But it also takes me to a place where it shows you what Point Fortin is really all about and what has made the economy here kick in. Can you see it? It's right at the center of your screen. Sometimes I'll pan like that so you could see where I am in relation to the current image in front of you. Do you see that? It's very unusual to be walking, let's say, in a town or city. And there you see some oil pumps. Now, you can actually see the oil on the ground, which I don't think should be a normal thing there's a leak somewhere but i can tell you that the fumes right now wow it's very strong so somebody has to come and see about these pumps because it shouldn't be leaking like that nor should the should be be smelling the um, odor from the petroleum to that strength and when I say that strength I mean it's the level of suffocating because if anybody was to pass here with a match or whatever that could be a whole fire there's a real strong odor of diesel and um, oil or something whatever I shouldn't say diesel but oil petroleum whatever it is from this area so very interesting how much how many times have you gone to see a town and you see this yeah, so that's me saying the same thing that I just said. And I call it diesel because when I'm filling my truck, um, the smell is very similar. And of course, diesel is made up as an oil. It's an oily fuel. So that petroleum smell is in it 
but it's really into intense and if you notice there are houses and, and stuff around here and I'm sure they are picking up that scent so that's an environmental hazard that somebody needs to take care of what do you think tell me in the comments area now in the southern part of Trinidad you see a lot of those huh? maybe not so close to a central part of a city like here or a town but um yeah you do see them and then but usually they're more isolated away from places but that one is pretty close so that was unusual for me now all this walking up and down holding a pole wow that really takes it out of you you won't believe how hard it is to do that. If you've never tried it, try holding a simple stick in the air for over an hour or more and you'll see how difficult it is. So we went into this grocery, more low, um, and got our drinks and now that we are refreshed, we can get back out doing stuff. This road would also take us back to let's say San Fernando or further up north and so forth this is actually the road I used to come into point 14 on the right is the place I came out of where I was showing you the oil pump the brake on the left is the truck I was showing you with the steel pan on the right are the maxi taxis. Those are very common in Trinidad. They transport people. You pay a fee. They're, they're usually parked up like that because they're probably transporting people from the north to here. Because the red color maxis, they um, tend to work up north. Now you'll notice the pavement or sidewalk is not in great repair and one of the problems is that when they raise the road, they pave the road, the sidewalk or pavement should also be raised and fixed but it's not so it's almost the same level of the road. That, that of itself is also a safety hazard doesn't help either with water and stuff today wasn't particularly sunny but at least it didn't rain so I was able to capture a lot however when it's nice and bright and sunny there isn't as many shadows I always find that there's a lot of shadows when it's kind of like a grey atmosphere there's also a bit of Saharan dust in the air which doesn't help anything either I'm not sure why I stopped here I think probably I was talking with the guy that um, I was talking to earlier about his crafts but like I said that will be another video one thing you'll notice too with JB's man cave and I used to actually have a big series of this was that I would just stand in one area and let the camera just record everything that passed by whereas people would just keep going or edit this out it kind of gives you a feel of okay this is what you would see if you were in point 14 right now so you get a level of traffic get a level of people amount of people walking by what's happening and so forth sometimes I also use this opportunity to put a little bit of history about point 14 
which is another feature that's unique to JB's Man Cave. And part of my production, I like to give information, talk about stuff and so forth. What is your connection to point fourteen? Make sure to talk about it in the comments area. And please, when you comment about stuff that I talk about, please note that for those of you who may be thinking small, no, I'm not complaining. What I am is bringing up things that need to be fixed. That's called progression, progressive. So I know some trainees just like things the way they are, you know. Nobody should complain, nobody should say anything. We should just be all happy with crime. We should be happy with no water. We should be happy that electricity goes on and off, that the, the roads are in disrepair and have lots of potholes, but that's all fine. Nobody should say anything, nobody should some complain. That's how a lot of people here think. And that's why things are just the way they are. No, no, no. Not for me. Here on JB's Man Cave, I'll tell you what I think should be improved. And the authorities that be should improve it. I am bringing awareness. That's my part. Letting you know it's there. It needs to be fixed. It's not up for me to go and actually fix it. That's another ignorant thing that people will co sometimes come and comment and say. Like if I should put on the camera and just start pulling out tools and start fixing the road. That's kind of silly. That's why we pay taxes. So we are going, we went on the main street. Now we'll try to go on some of the back streets of Point Fourteen. So you'll get a, a gist of how things are beyond just the main roads. While everything is closed, there are a lot of people about and some things are open, but you will get an idea of how it is. Maybe you're familiar with all these places and the things are wrong. Some of you do help me by commenting about what certain places, streets or buildings are, and that's great. I love that. Again, I'm not a historian. Don't pretend to be either. I only recall things from my own memory. I never really came to Point Fourteen much, so I really can't tell you a lot of history behind it. My only reflections of Point Fourteen was as a kid passing through here on the way to, usually it was Cedrus, uh, with my parents. And that was about it. Never really stopped, maybe, except to get something to eat or drink or whatever. But I don't really have any relatives or friends or anything that I know of in Point Fourteen, except friends as in you watching, my fans. Funny enough, a lot of you have been asking me for a Point Fourteen video. And although I do already have videos passing through Point Fourteen, this is the first one where I actually walk around it. So I hope you're enjoying it. Especially at this time of the Boris celebrations. And of course, if you really want to show that you are happy, please do go to my website, jbmancave.com and click on the donation button and give a donation. The best way you can show appreciation for what I do here is to give a donation. Because that's how I help my sons, how, how I... It also gives me the gusto to keep on creating these videos for you. In going down here, I'm going down one of the more residential streets, even though there are some commercial entities on it. Huh? 
In fact, um, that's one of the unique things about Trinidad that you may not see, let's say if you're from North America. Uh, residential communities will have a lot of commercialization to it. So somebody might be living upstairs, but downstairs they will have their shop, as you see on the right. Sometimes commercial places could be multi-purpose as well. So isn't all residential. Of course, we're still in point four, not in proper. So there is, uh, you know, going to be just that a mixture of commercialization with residential. And the further we get away from that, the more we see it. Now, you see that house there? I like to see interesting things like that because it's like a taking me back to the, the past. That's a wooden house. And it, when I was growing up as a kid, you used to see a lot more of those but not anymore. Nobody really builds their whole house out of wood anymore unless they particularly making a statement. And I even have videos of that, eh? Mod modern houses built out of wood. You'd have to check my channel for that. But um, basically, everybody builds with concrete and steel now, so you don't see any wooden houses anymore. So when I do see one I like to capture it. Wow, and this particular wooden house, what used to be a wooden house, I guess was demolished in some way. Needs to be cleared up. So yeah, now we're coming into the more residential part of Point Fortin, the more we walk. Maybe you've lived around here, no people around here. If you do, tell them about it, please. Let them know about JV's Man Cave, let them know that, hey, I was in your area and I picked you up. When I say you, your house, your street, etc. That mango tree is ready to give a lot of fruit. Still green, but given some time, it will be full. How many of you have eaten something called mango chow? That's where they take the mango when it's maybe half ripe, even less than half ripe. And they cut it up, season it, usually with salt, vinegar, sugar, shadow benny. Different other spices, I noticed uh, there's a new trend to use pineapple for that same purpose. Anyway, how many of you have eaten that of recent? It's something I used to love to eat when I was young, but not quite so much anymore. interesting how that place up above has as the roof of a building sort of a liming spot I guess I would call it now if you haven't already please do subscribe hit the subscribe button Subscribing is just saying that you like JB's Man Cave and want to be part of it. You do not have to pay anything to subscribe. That's different to the join button. There's two buttons. One is subscribe, one is join. Join is that you want to be an actual member 
of my channel to get certain perks like a certain badge identifying you as a particular fan or being able to see videos that I don't have public or getting to see videos way before everybody else. Different things like that. That's what the join button is for. That's a monthly subscription fee that you can always come out of. The subscribe button is just a free thing. You don't pay for anything. You don't do anything. You just click on it. And what that is, is just gives you notification every time I have a new video out. Now, some of you all get confused and think that because you see, let's say this point 14 video about Trinidad, that every video I make will be about Trinidad. And that's again, not what my channel is about. Trinidad and Tobago is just one place, one country of many hundreds of countries that I cover. Yes, there's an emphasis here because I'm from here originally, but not because the channel is about Trinidad and Tobago. I think people get mixed up with that. So you'll see a lot of other countries, other things, and the theme may also be different. In other words, not all is about traveling per se. Sometimes I cover a lot of mechanical um, equipment, vehicles, and so forth. There are there's a big part of my channel fan base that loves to see trucks, different kind of vehicles that you wouldn't otherwise see in other countries. Sometimes too, I get a lot of condescending people who would say that. I'm recording something because I've never seen it before or I've never experienced it before. And that, that again is a level of ignorance I don't understand. You know, does somebody take a picture of something or record something because only because they have never seen it? No, they record it for another purpose, maybe for others to see, to see it or just because it's interesting. In my case, largely, it's because I want others to also see what I am seeing or experience. For instance, I might have fans, or actually I do have fans from Asian countries, from African countries, from European countries, from Baltic states who have never seen anything like this. It's a different culture. It's a different look. It's different vehicles. It's a different way of of presenting something, a different kind of people, a different kind of dress style, and it's all new for them. Um, sometimes I'll get people saying, oh, you know, you've never seen this, or you've never, and that's why you're recording it, or you don't get out much, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Sometimes they're just people in the world, they just don't have anything good to say. Nothing positive or progressive. It's just like they're just on a negative vibe. They're, I know they're just unhappy, really. And they can't see anybody do anything unless they try to put it down. It's for a form of bullying that just I just don't take on. But anyway, just let other people know to subscribe. And you yourself subscribe. Again, it's free. My son who is with me, Jonah B. He wanted some popcorn. So you get some live views there of the lady taking out popcorn. Popcorn is around $5 TT, which would be less than a dollar US. Some people will get smart and they will charge about a dollar US or, or way more than that, maybe a dollar fifty. But it's a cheap snack food here. One of the better snack foods, I would say, once you don't put a set of butter and oil and stuff in it. I, I love popcorn, but I usually will use a air popper. That way there's no oil. To me, just popcorn with some Himalayan salt on it is good enough. Sometimes I will use nutritional yeast. If you've never tried that, it sort of gives that cheesy flavor to the popcorn. Give it a try. Maybe I'll have a video about that. Sometimes I also, again, train you how multi theme my channel is. Sometimes I will make short sort of video about something I cooked or eat or whatever and just put it up. 
And um, a lot of people will also say that, um, why don't you show yourself more or whatever? Really, I'm nothing to look at. And uh, rather than spoil your, your television set or crack it by looking at me, um, I just talk. It used to be that in my early videos, I never talked. I would just put music and show people stuff. But people, uh, you know, my fans started to nag and nag and they wanted to hear my voice and stuff. And so I started talking and uh, just keep up with that trend. But really, I'm a very conservative person. You would never find me doing anything like this, save for the fact that, again, why is this channel? It's for my sons. Being driven as a father is the reason I create these videos. Nothing else. Ah, there's a Barbadian flag on the right there. Nice to see it. Not sure why the flag is there, if they have some people from Barbados participating, or he just wanted to show that flag. Right, so following the street, this street would be the continuation of the main road in Point Fortin. And it's also the road that you would take to get out of Point Fortin if you're keeping if you want to keep on going towards Cedras and those places. You would have seen all these costumes and um people on the walking sticks and stuff earlier in the video while you get to see them again my purpose is actually to try and get into some of these side streets to see more of point 14 so you can see the side streets there are full of food one thing trinis love is their food and i will dare say that Trini cooking is one of the best cooking in, you know, in the world. Best recipes, best taste, everything. And I'm not really saying that just because I'm a Trinidadian. Um, and I'm from here. I'm, I'm, I'm actually saying that because I've been all around the world and I've tasted the way people prepare food. And... The thing, the advantage of Trinidad and Tobago is that we have so many cultures here. A lot of people came from India to Trinidad, Africa, Asia, and so forth. And in coming, they provided, they came with all their traditional ways of handling and preparing food. And with that comes this multi-ethnic way of presenting and preparing food for families that's just so common now it, you know people just call it trini food but really it's from other countries but anyway because you have that you know the flavors of curry the flavors of of you know chinese oriental cooking of of um the way the africans hear about their food the way they were able to dig up roots and prepare stuff even a bit of history from slavery times you know the 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 slaves would cr create a lot of meals from things that i'm sure their masters thought oh we just throw away this or whatever but they were very um smart in the way that they took everything and made a meal out of it and it is so good that it lasts till today we have meals like kalaloo and stuff which i don't want to go into what it is and all that but those things come from a day when people did not have a lot of means and made everything a food as much as they could. And they're very nutritious as well. And I love it. 
So for me, Trinis have some of the best cooking ever, best ways, best recipes and stuff. I think some overdo it though, in that there's it's not necessary, for instance, to have a lot of oil when you're cooking. I make most of my uh, own food and I don't use oil at all, not even to to moisten the pan. So it's not necessary, but for some people, they just love oil. I don't know why. But um, yeah, Trinity cooking is the best. Who agrees? So we're continuing on to the other end of point 14, going on the main road, trying to capture everything. You know, like I say in some of my other videos, if you want to, you can take any of these side streets and it will almost take you into a whole other adventure, a whole other part of the area. But I don't have that kind of time, so I kind of have to stay to the main road. But I do want to pick up most of Point Fortin proper as much as possible. Again, at an angle that you probably will never see because nobody is this tall. So for those of you who are familiar with um, Point 14, how does it look for you today? Maybe you haven't been here for a decade or decades. Um, a lot of people who live abroad, Trinis who live abroad, will come to my channel and say, wow, they don't recognize anything or they, everything looks so different. Others will say they recognize some things, but the majority is different. And some will just say everything looks more or less the same, just a different kind of building or a different kind of paint or the building is just changed for a different purpose, but everything is in the same position. How is it for you? How does point 14 look for you? Tell me in the comments area of this video on JB's Man Cave. And you'll also notice if again, if you're new to JB's Man Cave, you will notice that I'm not speeding up the video. Sometimes I will do that. But in this case, you want to take in everything, right? To St. Anthony RC Church here in Point Fourteen. Maybe you have attended there before. So that church will have some particular meaning for you. This road again will be, if you followed it, would take you towards um, South West Trinidad. 
This part is like a public car park as well as a public convenience, restrooms, etc. But what caught my eye was this tree and the flowers that bloomed on it. Does not really look nice. To me, we should have trees like this, flowering trees everywhere. You know, just make the place look nicer, give people things to look at. I just like it. What do you think? We have so many trees like that, huh? I could just think of the Pui tree, which is a flowering tree. That should be all over the country. Some people don't like it in their home because it doesn't bear any fruit or anything like that. And it just makes a lot of mess when it sheds. But wow, when it blooms, it's magnificent. I have videos specifically for that. Huh? You should look out for them in my channel. Sometimes I um, also record a lot of content, but do not have the chance to publish it. So I keep it in my archive until I'm ready and it comes out. You'll be amazed at some of the things I'm yet still to show you. You would always think, well, you know, JB has covered the whole of Trinidad. There's nothing else to show. No, you'll be surprised. And I'll be covering it in a way that a lot of people don't really think about. It's not the typical. So on the right here, I'm going to show you the point fourteen man there. It's closed. If it was open, I would have gone in. Maybe you have attended here at one time. You've been here. You can let me know if it looks the same. Looks different now. You tell me. It's, you can see how windy it is, right? And I don't mind that too because it's it gets pretty hot and that wind really helps to cool you down. One of the nice things too about when the roads are blocked off and you're walking is that you can bypass everything. A lot of the drivers here are kind of pissed off. You can't see it, but they're talking with the police officers. They want to pass. They want to go. And they can't. So they end up staying there. It shows you some of the traffic, the kind of vehicles in Trinidad. You'll notice a lot of them are of Japanese make. We do have um, American, Chinese, European vehicles here too. But they're definitely not as common as the Japanese variety.
Sometimes too, if I stop in an area like this, it's again, I have my son with me, so I don't know if he wanted to drink something or eat something or whatever. So I'll just stop for him to do that. Again, not editing the video because maybe there's something wrong here that you want to pick up and you want to see. Tell police officers on the bottom right. I see the uniform they wear. It's kind of like a dark blue and a gray. So we're going back the way we came. This will give you a different angle of point fourteen. Proper. Going in one direction just shows you one way and one look. Now you see the other way. By the way, if you haven't seen it, I have lots of other videos about Trinidad and Tobago. The one I made before this one uh, was Belmont. And before Belmont, Dago Martin, and before that, Pitti Valley, and so forth. I, I tend to cover a lot of areas in sections. But with the, the creation of this point 14 video, I believe I have more or less conquered all the major places in Trinidad. I know some of you will be quick to jump and say, oh, you didn't cover here, you didn't cover there. Or, you know, but those would probably be small communities or not places that are as significant in the bigger realm of things. Might be just their community where they live or whatever. And it's hardly unlikely anybody would be able to cover all of that because it's just so much. But I do have a link to the map of the places I cover because trying to find it sometimes on my channel could be difficult. So I have on my own JB Man Cave website a link to a map of all the videos of all the places in different parts of Trinidad. Look for it in the description. I have it there. So you could find the communities I've been to and the name. And and funny thing is that that map only really links the long videos of those places. Huh? I have shorter videos within those areas as well. I just don't link it, but they are all within my channel. So before you rush to say, why don't you do this or why don't you do that? Or record here, or record there. Go on that map and check and see if I haven't already done it. Um, in fact, I would have hmm, about, I don't know if I'm, how close I am to 2,500 videos on my channel. I don't know if with the release of this one, because this is a release for New Year's Day for my Trini fan base. But I'm close to it. Anyway. Thousands of videos. You couldn't have seen it all. Make sure to watch on my channel. In fact, I don't know any other Trini that has this many videos on their YouTube channel. But then again, I don't just cover Trinidad. 
even so my trainee videos will probably still be the most videos of other trainees um, because I have so many of them but again it doesn't encompass only Trinidad and Tobago oh that's some acrobatics <laughs> those people that walk on those walking sticks they're really proficient hats off to them I don't think I could do that what about you? Have you ever done any um, walking on walking sticks? Walk with zombies, etc. If you have, tell us what your experience is like when you first started it, how you learned it, who taught you, that type of thing. Um, I like to read those kinds of things. I'll, I, one thing I love is to learn about other people's experiences because um, we tend to know things, say things, and believe things based on what we were taught or what we were exposed to. That doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Huh? I know for us in our minds, we are thinking that what we were taught or what we were brought up to believe is automatically the way it is. A lot of times it's not. It's just perception taught us by those around us but as we are exposed to different cultures different people and so forth we realize it's different this lady showed me her eyes it was very interesting thanks to her for doing that that's really unique if you know her or you recognize her even with all that makeup and costume on let her know that you saw it on JB's man cave I like when people perform like that in front of the camera too instead of sh shying away I appreciate that <coughs> that's something that um, is very easy f I find let's say in North America people who are in costumes or whatever or in the public eye it's easy for them to perform let's listen to some steel pan kind of music I can allow you to listen to oh, the um, production the produced music now nah. that's the dial of point 14 you get in a good angle of it there right at the center of your screen where everybody is perched around I can imagine after an event like this must be quite a cleanup. But um, they usually do it pretty quicker. The cleanup crews, like after an event like this, they will come and they will pick up all those um, railings. They will clean up, make it look like if um, there was never any activity here. It's just that that doesn't happen all the time or I should say consistently enough so you get some DT areas but when it does happen yeah it's done pretty good A music truck coming here. It has some steel pans on it. Do 
you could see that with it with the passing of those bands it wasn't very big but things have automatically quieted down a bit giving you different angles close to the pavement sidewalk higher up and so forth With a lot of these events, if you're a food seller, really you have to make it a big go when the activity is, uh, is happening, when the revelers are out. Because once they are gone, everything just suddenly, it's almost like, um, I don't want to call it a Sunday morning. More like when you, you know, people who like to drink a lot and then the next day they get up with a headache. It's something like that. People just kind of want to go slow. I'm not too sure how much activity there will be after that, those main bands passed. But um, you can see everybody kind of just standing around. Wondering what's next, just taking any music, just talking, whatever, eating. With Trinis, once there's food and drink, that's the activity right there. Now, for me, um, I'm probably going to be heading back to where the guy who is doing the crafts to interview him. But I'm not, again, I'm not going to show that on this video. I'm going to give him his own video. And um, he goes different parts of the Caribbean and stuff eh, to do that. So I, that's why I went back there to record that. And I have to show that at some point. Now I'm heading back to the other area where I parked, so you could get to see a different part of Point Fortin. You can't hear it, but music is blasting right now. I mean, really loud. Loud enough that if I was to stand up here and talk to somebody, I could hardly hear them. Some Chinese love music like that. Loud and stuff, and I'm not one of them. This is what the squad cars, police cars look like in Trinidad. Maybe years from now, they will look different. So this part of point 14.2 is also, you know, I would call it some historic value the places on here that are significant for anybody passing through. 
through 0.410. Sometimes people talk to me and ask me to, um, they want to be on the camera. I don't mind obliging them. You can see where I came from this direction before. Across there, I believe, is the health center. Some other place. It's Republic Bank, which is a common local bank. Again, passing more maxi taxis from the north. Hmm, the district revenue office. Pay your taxes. National Insurance Board. So, like I said, this, this street would also be significant, but there's because there are a lot of government-based buildings on it. I'm going to take a look at this church because it has this kind of dividing point at this triangle where this road breaks into a Y. Maybe you've attended this church before or know something significant about it. Do you? Saint, what is that? Saint Mark? Anglican Church. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching my video today. Please do subscribe if you haven't done and visit my channel to donate. I appreciate all the help I can get. Thanks so much.